Welcome to Gospel Embassy Chapel and be spiritually nourished by Pastor Peter Murwabi. Skiriza, shetani yupo na lazima tumujulishe kwamba sisi pia tumemfahamu Mungu. You can also watch the powerful and uplifting sermons live on YouTube channel every Saturday. From now going forward, nobody in this church is dying before the time in Jesus name. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscription button on the right. For all prayer requests and information, call the number on the screen. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4 My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. Gospel Embassy Network TV The place to feed on heavenly bread. I want to speak to you about a few things that can make God change his mind on what he said. I know you know that God can change his mind, isn't it? And at one point, God changed his mind for a good reason. But sometimes God changes his mind on what he wanted to do for you. And it is only human action. It is our part that makes God to change his mind. What we do, the words what he said or with what he said is what God makes God to change his mind. You could have received a prophetic message. And that prophetic message is not always final. It's conditional. God could have said you're going to be elevated. But that kind of elevation depends on your willingness to be according to the expectation of the elevator. According to the expectation of the elevator. I spoke to you about two years ago about the power of maintaining your spiritual state. I did not tell you how you can maintain that or what you can do to maintain it. But I said there are several advantages of maintaining your spiritual status. And I said one of them is that you can never lose your miracle. But today I want to speak to you on the reasons why God can change his mind on what he said concerning you. Praise be to God. And when God changes his mind on you, he maintains that change. God said you are going to be a king and you don't become a king because of what you did. And then God transfers the kingship and the kingdom to another person he will never give it back to you. When the human actions become inappropriate that necessitates the change of mind. When human actions become inappropriate, that necessitates the change of mind of God. But when the human actions are in line with God's expectation, he never changes his mind. He actually enjoys their company. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. When God appointed King Saul, he appointed him so that his kingdom can reign forever. That's why he appointed him. First Samuel chapter 13. First Samuel chapter 13. Verse. Beginning from verse 11. When you read verse 13 of chapter 13 of First Samuel, Samuel spoke to King Saul. He told him, you acted foolishly. God will never entertain foolishness. And in most cases, the human mind becomes an apple to produce sense without divine intervention. Now, you acted foolishly, Samuel said. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, you could have established your kingdom of Israel forever. But as it is, your kingdom has been transferred to another. But now, your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out in a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Many people have different stories why God took the kingdom from Saul. But the main story is in 1 Samuel chapter 13. What is the story? Let me read it for you. Do you know what made Saul lose his kingdom? A very simple thing. Impatience. Impatience. Let me read for you. I want to read 1 Samuel chapter 13 beginning verse 7. So some Hebrews even crossed the Jordan to the land of God and Gilead. Saul remained at Girka and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. Now, he waited seven days. He was waiting for Samuel. He waited for seven days. The time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Girka and Saul's men began to scatter. He was threatened by, this, by their scattering. Now verse 9. So he said, bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offering. And, and Saul offered up the burnt offering. Just as he finished making the offering. Just as he finished. Do you know most people give up at the point when God is coming? Just as he finished. I have waited for too long for God to give me a husband. I will take up anybody. As you are taking up anybody, the real one shows up and you cannot reverse. Hello? <laughs> because you have already given out the offering, so you cannot reverse. Now listen to this. Samuel was the prophet. The man anointed and appointed and charged with the responsibility of giving the offering. And Saul was a king. So Samuel gave Saul the instructions of the Lord. He told him, go to Gilgal and wait. I'll come after seven days. That's when I will come and offer the offering. And Saul was there with his men waiting for Samuel. And all the signs indicated that Samuel is not showing up. Some of you, if you look at your life and see what impatience has caused you, it has deposited into your life things you never expected. Some of you, the sickness you are going through is because of impatience. The things you are carrying, the, the burdens you are constantly carrying with you, they are as a result of your impatience. 
Now Samuel tarried. He did not turn up in time. The Bible says, after they waited for seven days, because he said, I'll come in between seven days to offer the offering. Now Saul assumed that anybody can do it. So he went ahead and started giving the offering. He told the man, so bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offering. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. The question is, who was supposed to receive the offering? From a king or from a prophet? Impatience is the highest disconnector. That's why the Bible talks about the fruit of patience. Impatience is the highest disconnector. Ask God that he may give you the grace of patience that you can wait upon the Lord. And at no point can you say God has started. He has been too late. Say amen. amen. So Samuel came. But listen to, the, to how it happened. Just as Saul finished making the offering, Samuel arrived. Not as he was beginning to offer the offering, as he finished. Now he had done it to a point of irreversibleness. You cannot reverse it. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived. And Saul went out to greet him. And somebody has just come to offer the offering only to discover Saul has already given it. And what did he say? Saul went out to greet him. Samuel asked the first question, what have you done? And that's the question I'm asking my leaders this morning. What have you done? You could not wait. One time the disciples became impatient and they slept. I said, what have you done? You could not wait even for one hour. There is power in waiting. If you are a child of the kingdom of God, one of the things you need to ask from God is patience. In any case, you know you are not dying very soon. Why are you too much in hurry? What is the hurry for? You may even construct a house that was not given by to by God to you. Many of you have, have rushed because God said, I am going to help you to build a house. You have been waiting and you don't see it coming. You now rush into building anything. By the time the real design is coming, you have already constructed the exum. When your blessing is about to come to kiss you, that is the time you are about to relocate. As you have finished relocating to Mombasa, and that's when the blessing is running. Ask your neighbor, what have you done? You see now you have married the wrong person because of your impatience. You see now that's why your marriage can't last. You are already in a wrong relationship because you, are, you thought like you see how you end up making plunders for your own life. You make hasty decisions with imagination that God can fail. Tell your neighbor, God never fails a man. It is the impatience of a man that fails God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you have got to learn to wait. Say amen. Now, the kingdom that God gave to Saul was intended to last forever. But because of impatience, it was transferred to another man. Many of your blessings have been transferred because of impatience. They have been transferred. I, I was reading Bible when I read the book of 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 10. Uh, uh, chapter 3 verse 10. If, if I can read with you. 2 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 10. I can see the kingdom being transferred. Listen to this. May God deal with me. This is uh, uh, with Apna. I'm reading verse 9. Be it ever so safari. 
if I do not do for death to what the Lord promised him on earth, what was it? And they transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and they establish David's throne over Israel and Judah from Dan to Beersheba. It is this simple act of impatience that caused God to change his mind over Saul and they stop. Today, Jesus could be a son of Saul, but now he's the son of David. Because of this impatience. He took offer to give an offering that was supposed to be done by the, the, the prophet and, and, and he is a king. He only missed it within two minutes. It is two minutes. As he was finishing the offering, Samuel arrived. And they told him, you have done a foolish thing. And there is no way impatience can produce something that is not foolish. It's not possible. It is not possible. Impatience to produce something that is meaningful? <laughs> Never. Impatience does not know how to produce anything good. Impatience can only produce foolishness. If you have ever acted out of impatience, just understand, whatever you entered into is foolishness. Whether in a marriage on ST, you are entering into a foolish relationship. Whether a job that you have, you, you entered because of impatience, you are simply entering into a job that you don't need. You discover soon that that's not what you wanted and you will re resign. Because any time you act out of impatience, the fruit of impatience is foolishness. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you. Praise God. So what makes God change his mind over you? One is impatience. And two is disobedience. And three is contempt. Those are three. Today I was talking about impatience. One day God gave me the grace. I, I, I'll be able to speak about, uh, about disobedience. I will also be able to speak about contempt. In the Bible says, do not treat any prophecy with contempt. Contempt is just despise. Despise. Ogo chaya. Ogo siereria. Kupuza. Disobedience ni kukiuka. Contempt ni kupuza. God tells you, I'm going to bless you. You say, ah, I've waited. <laughs> Even the man of God is not seeing. Mm -hmm. You are free to move. But the rest of us will be here. Praise God. I wish you all the best in your journey of Christianity. Please, I want you to rise up and say, God, please give me the grace of patience. Give me the grace of patience. There is power in waiting. Young men and young women, wait upon the Lord. The higher your speed, you discover you are loaded with the luggage that you never intended to carry. You will have two, three children because of too much being impatient. If you were patient, who knows what God could have rewarded you with. Paul, the, 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 the man's soul, missed it. A few minutes. A few minutes. As he finished, Samuel arrived. I wish you could have even missed it one day. A few minutes is so hurting. That you take a few minutes out of the natural, out of the normal, the norm, and then you get disappointed all your life. That the family of soul didn't, never became anything, uh, even until now as I speak. Because kingship and the anointing and the presence of God was removed from their family and given to another. So that means they, it was emptied from them. If it was emptied, nothing could remain. Nothing could, could remain. That's why at, at some point, they were all killed. They tried to kill everybody. But instead, it is them that were killed all. They tried even to, to finish the prophets of God. A man. I, I think it's only a grandson that benefited. Maybe Voshet. 
who was already crippled. He was on his way to the grave. But the mercy of God turned around and he, 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 through the man David, he had compassion on Mephibosheth, who was a, a, a son from the lineage of Jonathan. Jonathan was a son of Saul, you know, a true prophet that connected to the man that God had anointed. That is how the family survived. That is the only person that had the mercy of David and the seat of David, and it was, it was welcome to eat at the, de- at the table of, of the king. But otherwise, the entire family was no more. Was no more. If there is anything you ask God this morning, is God making me patient. Amen. You know, we, some people have found us ongoing as, as leaders, but it's important they came in at this time. Please lift up your hands and let God give me patience. I want to, uh, patience, I want to be patient. I want to be patient. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscription button on the right. For all prayer requests and information, call the number on the screen. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4 My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. Gospel Embassy Network TV The place to feed on heavenly bread.